Hi there, and welcome to this next episode of Skyship Stories. In this episode, we look at some of the challenges around keeping a Skyship on the ground. Ground handling is one of the key challenges to lighter than air flight in general, and Rod explains some of the different concepts tried with the rigid airships of the past, and where the problems occur for non-rigid airships in general. So sit back, fasten your seatbelts as we vector the engines, push full power and up ship. Welcome to episode 7 of Skyship Stories. When people talk about manpower, when they're talking about operations of airships, you know, you've got to think of, I know people have tried to get around the amount of manpower that's needed. Um, you know, you just can't leave the airship. As you no, said, you, know, you need people around it, you need the crews. Um, do you ever think that we'll get to a point where with larger, shall we say, non-rigid ships, do you ever think um, what will what, in your view, will be the problems that they have to overcome? Well, you know, the famous photographs of the R101 being walked out the first time with whatever it was, 400 troops from yeah. every military garrison in the area. Uh, yeah. The US Navy, um, with the Akron and the Macon, got very good with mechanised ground handling. Mm -hmm. um, the tail of the ship was secured to a sort of 90 tonne railroad car in effect yes. and they they rolled it out with the mast and everything out of the hangar on railroad tracks and then everything converted and it could now swing 360 degrees with their blimps during and after the war they got very good at mechanical ground handling they had um essentially a, a pickup truck with a winch mm -hmm. on the back so instead of having six guys on a line you had a powered winch on a vehicle that could move with the ship we experimented. Um, one of the things I got involved in was we were doing some trials for um, the US Navy Flight Test Center at, at Patuxent River. They were examining what the problems might be of reintroducing airships to the Navy uh, or the military in general. Um, and one of the things they wanted to know was how accurately could we hover so we did trials with a vertically mounted camera with the whole apron of Weeksville marked out in one meter squares all numbered and we were able to track and record exactly how accurately we could hold a hover with the wind changing. Another thing they were interested in was ground handling. Can we reduce the number of people involved? Could we reduce it to zero? Because one of the things they were looking at was the possibility of using the airship to deliver maintenance crew, repair crews, to early warning stations up in the Arctic, unmanned stations. Could we re reduce ground handling crew to zero by completely mechanising it? Um, we, we did a sort of Heath Robinson version of a system that would probably just about have worked. We did have a couple of um, one ton trucks with constant tension winches on. Um, and they weren't used very often, but you could use those to take a ship in and out of the hangar. In and out of the hangar is tricky. Mm -hmm. That's the only time you put the airship within its own length of something solid, which will wreck it if it hits it. Yeah. The wind has to be in the right direction. The wind has to be below a certain strength. Normally, you have an awful lot of people on the ends of ropes at that point. We have the ability to use two of these vehicles. So the mast itself is on wheels and can move up and down, no problem. Normally, going in and out of the hangar, you have quarter lines from just in front of the horizontal fins. You have handling lines which are normally clipped up out of the way. You unclip those, you clip mm -hmm. an extension onto them, and you put 20 guys to keep the ship lined up as you go in and out of the hangar. You could replace those guys with one of these trucks with constant tension winches. Um, and that worked. That did work. So now, theoretically, you could go in and out of a hangar with a crew chief to supervise. Well, in actual fact, a pilot would normally supervise in and out. A driver on the mast and a driver and a winch operator on each of these two mule vehicles. As ships got bigger, you were going to have to do that. There is no way a Sentinel mm. 5000 was going to have 
lots of bodies pulling on bits of string to keep it in line. Yeah. You were going to need mechanical ground handling. And it is feasible. Um, it hasn't been done much since the United States Navy were doing it in the 50s and the very early 60s, but it, it could be done. And I'm sure that's the way things will go if people start building big ships. Okay. It has to go. You couldn't mm -hmm. possibly have 400 grand crew to come in and out of a hangar these days. Yeah. 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 And, and it's not just, you know, we're talking about, you know, there's the hangar. Well, you've got the, you know, the airfield at Carlington, but it's going to have to be 400 people, you know, wherever it lands. You know, you're going to have to have the manpower, additional yeah. manpower, wherever it's going to land. And manpower is expensive. Yes. You know, the ship is expensive. Yeah. But the constant drain of paying a large ground crew would really make things financially difficult. Um, you, you actually, again, the hydrogen rigids were different. Mm -hmm. um, we talked about passenger boarding in the hands of the crew. They used to put the Hindenburg and the Graf Zeppelin into the hangar to load the fair paying passengers for a transatlantic and then they'd walk it out of the hangar. Um, I still haven't worked out in my own head how on earth they managed to keep to a schedule doing that with the weather in Frankfurt. Yeah. But um, the ship, our ships didn't go in the hangar. They might go in two, three times a year. Mm -hmm. The rest of the time they live on the mast. They go into the hangar to have a banner changed because you can't put a cherry picker up beside it out in the field where it might swing. Uh, you put it in the hangar for major maintenance. Um, we could add helium on the mast. We could do most things on the mast. Uh, and in fact, I was involved. <laughs> I was involved in uh, an engine change on the mast which is quite exciting because you have then got to drive a vehicle with a heavy engine right up yep. to the side of the gondola with an awful lot of blokes on the ropes just in case the breeze starts to play <laughs> silly and get the truck out of the way as quickly as you can. Yeah. Um, but normally the ship just lived on the mast. Mm -hmm. uh, but just getting to the mast with a big ship would be either an awful lot of people or mechanical. 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 Yeah. We hope you enjoyed this episode and learnt a little bit more about the practicalities of flying and handling these wonderful ships. Now next time, this is my personal favourite story, where Rod explains the event around handling a skyship during a snowstorm. It's exciting times. So until next time, keep vectoring those engines.